first. Despite modest gains from markets this week, the cracks caused by the COVID-19 shutdown are continuing to strain the U.S. economy. The economic data this week has been awful. Now 22 million people have applied for unemployment benefits in the last four weeks, erasing much of the job gains over the past decade. Retail sales plunged to a new low in March as businesses continue to shutter due to this shutdown and stay-at-home order. The housing sector took another severe hit as housing starts and home builder confidence saw dramatic slumps. But while the White House is discussing guidelines to reopen the country, as the data shows the pandemic is peaking, how long will it take to recover our economic luster? Joining us right now to talk about that and investing today in the broader markets during the shutdown is uh, managing partner of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. David, great to have you this weekend. Thanks so much for joining us. Good to be with you, Maria. So let me get your reaction to what we've heard this week. The president came out with guidelines to reopen the economy uh, in three stages. That certainly sparked a, a rally in stocks when he first started talking about it. Is this realistic? Do you think that the economy gets back to where it was? And how, what's your reaction uh, to now this new conversation taking place in terms of the reopen? Well, it's certainly positive. And I'm not, I'm not even sure that it's positive because of any particular specifics. It's more just the idea that there now is a plan, that there's some trajectory towards reopening the economy. And I think that um, underneath the hood, there's a lot of good and, and there's wisdom there. But I also think there's still some uncertainty. And so we're going to see ongoing volatility. Obviously, this rally that uh, comes about from the federal government giving some guidelines is not the beginning of a rally, right? The rally began a couple weeks ago, uh, just sort of when the forced selling was done. On a go-forward basis, though, I think everybody is aware there's a lot of uncertainty in the economy. We have at least a good portion of those losses having been regained. Going forward, I think it's going to be a grind. And a grind is what we heard from some companies this week as the first quarter reporting season kicked off. You heard from J.P. Morgan and Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, you also see a real difference in terms of sectors. The banks, Jamie Dimon, in his uh, conference call with analysts, basically said, look, you know, we're looking at a reopening. It could be June, July, August. You know, nobody knows. There's a lot of uncertainty there. But one thing that he did say was that we're preparing for what is likely to be a severe recession. Yeah, and I think that that is what has sort of been baked into the markets over the last month. We know that we're going to have recessionary conditions here for at least a quarter, probably two quarters. The banks are going to be on the front lines of that. I think that so far it's been a mixed bag. You saw Procter & Gamble with revenue increases in the quarter, earnings increases in the quarter, raising their dividend. Johnson & Johnson did the same thing a few days ago. So the banks are probably ground zero for the uncertainty. They have to kind of extend credit to an economy that right now has no demand for credit. So you expect banks to be more constricted in the immediate weeks and months uh, following this contraction as things open up. Uh, that will definitely change for the banks down the line. So where are the opportunities in terms of investing today, if there are any? I mean, in the past, you've talked about dividend payers. Do you want to stick, stick to your strategy that you've been on before, or are there new ways to invest in this new normal? Well, there's new ways to invest within the same philosophy. At least at, at my company, we believe in dividend growth companies through bad markets and good markets. The difference is right now, those dividends have all gotten much better. You have companies like Verizon and Merck and Coca-Cola that are paying higher yields than they were a month or two ago just because of market prices being lower. But I also think opportunistically, one has to start to wonder if some of the names that have taken on particular distress uh, become much more tempting. And, and the energy sector is an example where nobody has wanted to necessarily go. Oil still has not necessarily found its bottom um, even with that major OPEC plus production cut. What we know, though, is that demand has to come back in some measure at some point, and that those oil companies, I think of the Chevrons and Exxons that pay dividends, they have no intention of cutting their dividend through this period, they become very attractive to investors that can wait out 
the, the next several months of uncertainty. So the higher risk elements we'd recommend are in those types of beaten up companies that probably have been beaten up too much. And by the way, they're off of their lows as well, Maria. But then I think on the other yeah. side of a sort of equity barbell are the real stable companies that are, are really strong balance sheets, much less cyclical in their business and have performed quite well through this whole period. David, it's great to get your insights as always. Thanks so much for being with us this weekend.